Full-time Devils, huge debate. That's right, we are at it again. We've got Steven Allison here. We've got Angelina here. We've got Jay here. I'm not debating, but my name's Gaz, and I am hosting this and trying to keep everyone from attacking each other virtually through the screen. Uh, right, so basically what we're going to do today, since we're approaching January, is everybody on today's debate is going to put their case forward for which position they think we need to strengthen the most. So we're starting with Housen today, right? Housen, which position do United need to go out and strengthen in in January? Uh, I'm going with striker, mate. Why? <laughs> I think what we've seen when Tony Marshall didn't play is that we were relegation fodder. Not having a striker completely cost us. Uh, the team fell apart. The, 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 the plan just looked like it was non-existent. And it looks like it's probably going to be the easiest one to do. And preempting people going, well, we need other positions first. We need this, that, and other. We've got strikers. Okay, I can accept that. But sometimes you can only sign the players that are available. Can't sign players that aren't available. Can't sign players that don't want to come to you. If we can sign, let's say, Haaland, because he wants to come to us, we need to get him. And examples of where we've had similar six circumstances in the past. In 2012, we had Chicharito, Welbeck, Wayne Rooney, and Berbatov as our strikers. And so I like, still went out and bought Robin Van Persie. And the difference he made was winning the league for us. So I'm going to say... Someone who can bag goals, someone who wants to come, someone who suits Ollie's plan because he knows what this kid's going to offer is more important than a risk that we could take on any number of different midfielders or defenders that are available. So I'm going to let the guys in the debate get stuck into that in a sec. First thing that I have to say, though, do you not think that bringing in a striker would hinder the likes of Mason Greenwood's development? No, did signing Carol Poborski in 1996 hinder David Beckham's um, development? I don't know, mate. I was 12 months old. I like the way you've uh, come in no. with the argument, the obvious arguments there, and then before you hand it over to me and Angelina, you've just took away the best ammunition that either of us could have. Sorry, I didn't realise. <laughs> so it's like my argument almost negated there because Jazz has already come up I didn't know it, everyone, and he's already answered it. I didn't know everyone was thinking the same thing, but hey-ho. So debate over Steve wins. Right. <laughs> Go on, Jake. Well, you must have more no, to say right. than I get where Steve's coming from uh, with the whole... Paborski, David Beckham reference, but it was, I think, memory serves, that was just after the Euros in 1996, so we weren't 100% sure on David Beckham, and it wasn't a case of Paborski was an up-and-coming youngster, I think he was in his early 20s at the time. The thing is, say for Haaland, for example, you bring him in, he's a teenager, is he 19, is he, Haaland? He's 19 years old, so he's obviously, if he does come in as United striker, he's going to be around for many years, as is Mason Greenwood, as is, at least for, I'd expect for at least three or four years, and in Marshall, and I think really, that, possibly, but that's the problem. I think you've got, I think you've got their players where you've got three players who could be around for at least a few years, all going for that one position, and I think it could hinder the team, and I think it could hinder slightly hinder Mason Greenwood. And I think the problem we've got there is not so much that Mason Greenwood doesn't get games. We do this thing that we've done with other strikers. Steve mentioned there one of the players he mentioned when we had an abundance of strikers was Danny Welbeck, and we shifted him over to the wing. And he was, you know, he wasn't a winger at all. He was a striker playing as a winger. You tell I don't think he's, I don't think his career ever recovered from that. And you know, going back earlier when we bought Berbatov, we bought in Berbatov, and it was great because we had Berbatov, Rooney, Tevez, um, and then what happened? Tevez left because he got disillusioned. So I think you've got to get that right balance. So why I wouldn't be against buying a striker? I think yeah, if Haaland came, you're not going to hear me moaning at all, and I get why we need him. I think there's other areas where we should strengthen a bull striker. You mentioned then some of the strikers we had at that point it was Berbatov, Rooney, Tevez. They, yeah, the three top class strikers, but three very different strikers. Haaland is different to any of the other strikers that we have in this style of play. You know what? For the first time in his life, Gaz has made an excellent football <laughs> point. I've done it. What? I've done it. I can't believe this is happening. All I've ever point, wanted. Steve just called it excellent. All I've ever wanted. This is a monumental occasion on Steven, full Devils. All I've ever wanted this is, is Stephen Housen's approval. That's all I've ever wanted, approval. And we're here, finally. It, it really is the season of goodwill. Uh, Angelina, <laughs> what do you think you of that? Have Sherry Housen? Is that what it is? <laughs> Rob. What do you think of that then, bringing in Haaland? Why, why is that or, not or a the best <laughs> option to go for? Um, I don't think it's necessarily like the worst option, but kind of similar to what Jay said, I think there's other areas that we need to strengthen. Um, my only concern would be 
anything disrupting Marcus Rashford at the minute. Like, if we bring another striker in, don't know if it's, like, more competition for him, whatever, something derailing him at the minute, just keep him going as he is. Um, and also the play kind of between Marshall and Rashford that we've been seeing recently. Marshall isn't there yet, but I figure if we maybe give them a little bit more time to continue kind of growing and getting that good play together, maybe we could see something good from them. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it would be great to have a striker, but I think there's maybe other uh, issues, especially since Rashford at the minute is, you know, on a bit of a goal-scoring uh, high. So, yeah. That's a good point, actually. Uh, Steve, talking about Rashford, because he is in the absolute form of his life, do you think he'll continue this for the whole season? And if that's the case, no need for a striker. Uh, why? Because we're still drawing games. So instead of drawing games 2-2, 3-3, let's win 7-2. Uh, OK, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, next argument, Angelina, are you going to go for the midfield? Yes, midfield for me. Um... Yeah, I, I just think we we can have, you know, great strikers um, and we have got, you know, a great striker in Rashford and, you know, a growing great striker with Greenwood. But um, if we've not got the service, we've not got that delivery in the final third, you know, we, we're stuck and we've seen that, you know, recently in games where the strikers are crying out for the ball and they're not getting that service. And I think the players that we've got, you know, like against Colchester, Matter had that great little ball to Rashford, but you know Matter's about five hundred, and it's, he can't he can't keep up, and and that's not his fault. It's just his age, and um, you know who else are you looking at? Fred seems to have you know sorted himself out recently, which is great, but how do we know that that's going to continue? Pereira just makes me feel unwell. I just feel like. <laughs> Like, he really stresses me out. Like, I feel like I get anxiety when I watch him because I'm just waiting for him to do something that's just going to, like, be devastating. Um, and I know a lot of people are fans of his, and he is young. And, but for me, he feels like he's been here ages and nothing's really happening. I'm not seeing any improvements. Maybe Solskjaer sees something we don't. I don't know. But um, obviously, McTominay has been vital when we've seen him, you know, injured. Everyone was crying out for him. Um so, you know, McTominay's kind of a, a strong one, but the others are either not proven or a little bit rocky. So for me, I think everyone's crying out for Madison. I know that that's probably not going to be till summer if it does happen. So maybe in January, looking at somebody like an Ericsson, uh, uh, you know, at Spurs, he's 27. So he's not kind of not kind of too old, but he's been around for a bit, hasn't he? So he's got the experience. I think his Premier League stats are like, 200 and odd games, like 50 goals, 62 assists or something like that. So he, he's proven that he can, you know, deliver with, with what we need as well as a couple of goals as well. I think he would strengthen the squad um, and he'd give us that bit of creativity that we need. And he's played in big competitions as well. So he, he's got everything for me. Jay, surely with the fact that Paul Pogba could be leaving. I was waiting for that. I was, wait <laughs> I was waiting for the Paul Pogba. I was, I was amazed he didn't come up there. I thought, when's, when? I was waiting for the, the Paul Pogba coming, but is it that bad that we don't even mention him now? So, well, I think we've all we've, he's accepted if he's not leaving in January, it's probably going to be the summer. And the fact that we can't break teams down mainly because of the lack of that creative number 10, surely a midfielder has to be the priority. Because we're talking about January, and I get what Angelina's saying about someone like Ericsson, because I think when we played Spurs, he came on and I was looking at their bench with Envy when they can bring on someone like Christian Ericsson as a substitute, and we were struggling to cobble the midfield together. But I think with Paul Pogba now, <laughs> everyone's sort of accepted that he's going to go, and the big question is, is it going to be the summer or is it January? But I think there's a good chance that it will be the summer. I think if Oli can sit down with him and say, listen, you know, we know you don't want to be here, you're going to get your move in the summer, but we need you from January till the end of this season to give your all and we'll, you know, we'll sanction a move for you. And I think there could be, you know, he could do that. I think Oli could convince him to stay. I mean, bigger, bigger and better players than Paul Pogba have stayed at United for a little bit longer because they've been convinced to. I'm not saying it was the same situation when it was like the likes of Ronaldo or Eric or whatever. It was different. It was a different scenario on a different team, of course. But I think you can say, say to him, listen, you go in the summer, you get your big money move, just give me everything you've got until then. I think Pogba, you can sell that to Paul Pogba and you should be able to because I think if you get Paul Pogba back and fit, Angelina just said it then, Fred is beginning to do bits. McTominay is vital to our team. So those two aren't really going anywhere. There's your sort of double pivot, if you will, in the number six role. Put Paul Pogba in front of him and you've got a very strong midfield. And if that midfield, I know there's lots of ips and buts and maybe, can stay fit and can get consistency throughout the end of the, till the end of the season, sorry, then 
that's good enough for Manchester United. That's good enough to challenge for the top four. So I don't think you need to bring someone in in January unless Paul Pogba goes. But because I don't think Paul Pogba's going to go, if this all makes sense, I don't think the midfield should be the priority. Halson, how do you think Pogba would play as a number 10? I don't think he's a number 10, but I think you bring him back into the middle of midfield and you play 4-3-3 three, three again uh, and allow him to drive into that number 10 position, which is where he always does great. And whenever we played in the 4-2-3-1, he was always choked up by whoever, Mkhitaryan and Matt, whoever was sort of in his way a little bit there. Um, but I think Jay's just about to undo his own argument here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know he's saying um, we don't need a, a midfielder there and, and he's obviously going to go for a winger. Uh, so everything he's just said there about not needing a wing, uh, midfielder, I'm going to throw at him before he even starts. I'm not liking where this debate is going. Why, why I'm going to say, with everything you've just said already. there, he's agreeing on with the you left, we've got options. We've got Marcus Rashford, which Angelina's already said, you can't stop him doing what he's doing. So, okay, I agree with that totally. I would say on the right-hand side, you've got Dan James doing bits. And as you've already said, Mason Greenwood's doing his best work off that right-hand side. So... Tony Marshall up front. Hang on a minute. Up, Don't I make my argument first for the winger before you rip into bits? <laughs> You're preempting it, right? I didn't get, a, I didn't get a assigned appendix of rules prior to what's going. <sighs> so just, I'm just preempting what you're about to say and just saying. Look, if you're going to throw arguments around, and I will, I'll reply to Angelina's here on the midfield as well. If we can't sign a striker because we might hinder the development of Mason Greenwood, we shouldn't be looking at any midfielders because in Ethan Galbraith, Dylan Levitt, and Ethan and um, and Jimmy Garner, you've got a midfield that could probably play. Angel Gomez not even getting mentioned here because I think we're all just resigned to the fact he's probably going to go Barcelona, but. If you didn't go and sign a midfielder, if you could convince Angel to sign a contract, you might have a youngster with world-class potential. Now, whether he reaches that or not is on him, but he's definitely got the potential to do it. So um, if we're not signing a striker because it's going to hinder the development of someone, then no way am I accepting you saying sign a winger or a midfielder for the same reasons. Very interesting point. So now everyone will be shocked to find out that Jay is going to choose left back because we haven't got any <laughs> any decent left back, Why especially not any that are made for Stephen Halson. That would have made much more sense <laughs> if you actually did argue for a left back. Why would we need a left back when we've got Ashley Young? Right, right, okay. Let's not go down this road that I'm sick of going down every time me and Steve speak. It's so over now, he's going. Yeah, it's over. Let's, we've, let's move on finally. Um, yeah, I am going to go for a winger, although now I'm not sure why. No, seriously. Yeah, I think in January, I think we should go for a winger. Now, everyone will go, as Steve's already pointed out, why do we need a, a winger when you've got Dan James doing bits? He's, he's sort of exceeded expectations. Marcus Rashford, when I say winger, I think wingers in the modern game are almost over. When you think of a winger, a lot of the time, you're thinking of a Ryan Giggs, or I am anyway, or an Andre Kinshelsky, or even a David Beckham type who's literally hugging oh, the touchline. Stanley touch Matthews, because you're old. Yeah, Stanley Matthews, um, or Charlie Mitten. No, but... when. <laughs> When we think of that, winger, you're thinking of someone that is getting down that touchline all the time. And in the modern game, wingers are almost a dying breed. Most of the time when we talk about a winger, you're talking about someone who's actually like an inside forward. The likes of Jaden Sancho, for example. Is he a winger? Not really. Is he a striker? No. Is Marcus Rashford a winger? No. Is he an out-and-out -out striker? No. No, I'd argue he isn't. I'd say he's sort of in that channel in between. So that's the sort of player that you're talking about and someone like a Jaden Sancho could come into this United team and elevate it. If he was available in January, would we all want him? I think we all would. Would we find a place for him in the United team? Yes. Does it have to hinder the progress of other players? No. I think one thing with, you remember with these sort of attacking players and these wingers, wingers if you call them that, is you can rotate. A lot of the time they do pick up injuries. Dan James has come in and all of a sudden he's the best thing since sliced bread. He could easily get an injury. He could easily have a dip of form. All the great United teams have actually had options on the wings as well. Going back to what Steve was saying about the time when we had four strikers. All the good United sides have had different options on the wing as well. Now you look, might look at it and you might think, were they really that great? Someone like Jesper Blomqvist, for example. A lot of people dismiss him, think Jesper Blomqvist weren't that great. The season we won the treble, Jesper Blomqvist played 41 games. 41 games and we won the lot. One of the best seasons that anyone's ever had. You've always had different options on the wing. And I think now we need different options because Dan James is playing well. If he gets an injury, who we're going to bring in. Okay, you put Mason Greenwood on the ring, but then there's an argument that we've all made that he can play as a striker as well. So you're going to hinder progress if you're shifting players about, where if you bring in someone who is a winger or an inside forward specific for that position, then there's plenty of time to rotate. And let's not forget, a winger is a position as well, where more often than not, you're bringing them off the bench. If something's going on or you're not winning a game, Dan James has been great, yeah? If he 
is Fulham Dips. You want to drop him from the squad, you want to bring him on. Imagine bringing him on last 15 minutes when you're up against it, how rapid he is. It'd be a nightmare for a fullback. So I think bringing in a winger in the summer, uh, sorry, in January, would be a priority for me because I think we've got options up front. I think Martial and Rashford are playing well. I don't want to see that broken up. I think in midfield, as I've said earlier, Paul Pogba, I think we can convince him to stay till the summer. So I think if we brought in someone like a Sancho or whatever, I think it would give us a massive boost and push us towards top four. Angelina, we've got Dan James playing well on the wing. We've got Marcus Rashford playing well on the wing as well. So would you not want a winger to come in just to see those lads to continue getting first-team football? Um, yeah, I think, I think don't, you know, like, mess with it if it's doing all right and everything seems to be going out. Okay. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Or if they say in Salford, don't mess with it if it's doing all right. <laughs> I've got what the, like, proper same <laughs> um, But also, I just feel like getting Sancho over here, is he, you know, he's got so many clubs after him. Is he going to be happy kind of competing with Daniel James and potentially just having to come off the bench every now and then? Or I, I, I don't know. I, I don't really know if that's going to be a big selling point for him. I don't <laughs> think that would be the first thing you'd say to him. Yeah. Come and warm the bench while this kid we just bought from yeah, Swansea it out for 15 mil yeah. gets a start. Yeah, I, I don't really... I, I guess if, if you were looking to come to the club, there's already those options there. Would you necessarily get someone that was happy with, with that? Yeah. Interesting, interesting points. Housen, I was about to ask you, but... I'm He's already... He, he did it before I even got my yeah, words yeah, out of yeah, the mouth, him. You've preemptively hey. done it, haven't you? So, um... Where is the love? Brother? Let's go to the 32nd round. This is where we decide who's won today's debate, who has the best argument. I make you sort of shorten it, if you like, to a concise 30-second argument. We'll start... We'll start with Housen. Housen... Striker, wasn't it? Yeah, Housen. Yeah. Striker. <laughs> 30 seconds, tell me why Manchester United need a striker. Go. The striker that we're going for in Erling Haaland is someone that Solskjaer knows, someone that he sees the evolution of this team. I think Tony Marshall's doing well, but I can see where someone who can hold the ball up and link the play a little bit better than Tony Marshall could take this team further. If you want to sign a winger, you're going to be hindering Dan James, Rashford, or Mason Greenwood, because that's where he's getting his goals in right now. So I'm not accepting that argument. If you want to sign a midfielder, I definitely understand that. But you show me which midfielder that's world-class, that's available, that wants to come to Manchester United, that Solskjaer knows. You don't know him. And Jesper Blomqvist Six. played 41 games seconds. in 1999 because Ryan Giggs' his hamstrings were as fragile as his relationship with his in-laws. 30 seconds, not 40. But, yeah. So, yeah, it's all right, yeah. That, that, that point at the end... It's not being it's not being thought about, mate. It's not being brought under consideration in today's right, okay. debate. I'm gonna pretend I didn't how, hear it. How fragile Ryan Giggs is. Yeah, it didn't shrink. happen. I didn't know about it. It didn't happen. See, he's still getting it in. Angelina, you've got 30 seconds to tell me why Manchester United need a midfielder above everything else in January. Go. So I think at the moment the midfield needs a little bit more creativity. You've got the likes of Fred and McTominay, who seems to be doing great at the minute. Pogba, I've just resigned himself to the fact that he's going to get another injury or he's off to Madrid already. So you need somebody who's already, you know, got experience in the Premier League. They've already, um, you know, got the stats. They've played in big competitions and they're going to be able to deliver in that final third. And someone for me is Ericsson because I think that he would really strengthen the club and bring some creativity there. Oh, Angelina, 30 seconds. It was a good argument, don't get me wrong, but you ruined it at the end for me because apparently I'm the one making the decision, am I? Yeah, right. you are, well, so, unless you want me to make it. If you, said, kick myself. if you said James Madison instead of Ericsson... It's just because I don't think you'll come till summer. And I agree with that as well. Well, I can't see And this whole argument's about who you can get in January. Yeah, and Ericsson. Mm, right, okay, right, fair right, enough. Right, you know, I'll on think about point, it. On that point. I'll right. think about it. And now we've got Jay, who's got no chance of winning. 30 seconds, summarise your debate, go. Jay's got no chance of winning. You've got, was, it's in your right, 30 oh seconds. Oh my God. Right, we're talking about who we can get in January. Ericsson, all right, yeah, he's a good player, but he's a Spurs reserve. Is that how we're going to catch the top four by buying the reserve players of teams that are around the same level as us? Um, Halson makes a good point about Haaland, I get it, but there's even talk of us getting Haaland in January and loaning him back till the end of the season, which sort of defeats the object of getting him in in January. We're not going to see him till the summer anyway, so how is that a January signing for Manchester United? How does it improve us in January? It doesn't. Long term it's great, short term it isn't. We could get someone like Jaden Sancho in in January and he could make a difference and get us into the top four. Right. Why did Jay get three quarters of an hour? 
No, he's, he's got 34 <laughs> seconds. And I wasted four seconds he started because four he seconds insulted me before I started. Oh, you know okay. what? I, I actually think that it's a good argument as well to bring in Jaden Sancho because that's one that's likely and a player that we've seen more of to suggest he's of, not world-class bracket, but just getting up there than we've seen a Haaland. A good lad I know told, tells me that he likes Manchester as well. Well, yeah. You know what, Joe? I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. I'm going to give it to Jay. Even though, personally, I think we need a midfielder and a striker I way more. I can't believe that the only time Housen's paid you a compliment, he doesn't win the debate. <laughs> he usually lays in at you and he wins anyway. <laughs> right. No, maybe I like it. Maybe I'm just a sadist or something. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, guys, get in the comments below. You let us know who you think won today's debate. And also, if you think we need a striker and fielder or a winger, tell us who you think it is. Maybe you think we need all three. Get them in the comments below. Subscribe to Full Time Devils. Check out these guys. They're all on YouTube. Well, I'm only on, on this over. channel, really. To be honest, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. Apparently, I'm on TikTok now. What? Oh. Are you? Uh, uh, no, yeah, no, no, someone, someone told me yesterday. Am, so. Yeah, it's not, it's not where you want to be. Uh, right, we'll see you next time on Full Time Devils in a bit, guys.